G'day. Welcome to another instalment of interviews with Distinguished Lifetime members. In this case, we're talking with Dave Wickers. Dave is instrumental in the founding of OWASP Foundation, which is the nonprofit arm. Uh, Dave, you were around very, very early in the actual OWASP uh, ecosystem as well, weren't you? Yeah, well, uh, when Jeff Williams and I started our consulting company, Aspect Security, which you worked for as well, mm -hmm. um, we were looking for ways to get involved in a bigger community beyond ourselves. And Jeff found OWASP uh, in 2002. And at the time it was like 10 guys on a mailing list of which mm -hmm. you were one of them because you were involved even before we were. And uh, he uh, immediately found uh, a way of contributing by contributing uh, WebGo actually. So mm. Aspect Security actually had a an application that we converted into WebGoat uh, that we used in our training program that we had already had. And so that was our first contribution. Mm -hmm. And then about a year later, he came up with the idea of the OS Sub 10, which we launched. Uh, and then lots of other things after that. But that's just, that was the very, very initial uh, work that we did at, at OWASP was those two projects. And I think honestly, a lot of the pe people in this field got their go, like their, their teeth cut on WebGoat as their first training um, module. I mean, Juice Shop wasn't around for another decade or more. So, yeah, well, I, I know so they learned. <laughs> any AppSec conference, and you'd see WebGoat everywhere mm -hmm. <laughs> in all the vendor booths because they're talking about, well, how awesome are we at finding vulnerabilities in WebGoat? And we're like, well, that's not really re realistic. But it was really the only open app that people could test against and that people were familiar with. So that was not its intent. It was intended as sort of like a developer training kind of app. But mm -hmm. just like the OS 10 was not intended to be a standard, it became one de facto. Yes. Yes. Anyway, how things get reused and repurposed is interesting, uh, which is fine. I mean, it's, if it's valuable to people and however they want to use it, that's great. Yeah, um, look, at the end of the day, I, I don't know that many people really realize just how custom the WebGoat of the time was. And it didn't actually use any other frameworks that I was aware of. It didn't use Struts or any of the, the major um, frameworks that had its own thing. So finding vulnerabilities in it was pretty much unique. It said good things about the tool if it could find them about WebGoat, but nothing really else. But it was interesting. Yeah, well, <laughs> people, of course, tuned their tools to the to WebGoat, of course. And then we have the same problem with OS Benchmark, which I run now and, mm -hmm. you know, but that's okay. I mean, you know, you can't expect people to not code to the test if the test is public. Um, even though WebGoat was never intended to be a tool quality uh, tester, if you will, but um, it's okay. Yeah. Uh, my personal computer's BIOS actually has a pass mark setting to allow better benchmarks. <laughs> in an unrealistic way, <laughs> um, I'm not surprised. So obviously, um, would you like to just chat about the early days of the OS Top 10? I mean, lots of people don't really realize where the first bunch of data came from the OS Top 10. Do you want to just go into that a little bit? Yeah, well, you know, the, the SANS Top 25 existed prior to the OS Top 10. Mm -hmm. And that was kind of our inspiration um, not just because it existed, but actually, frankly, as consultants in the field, we're running around saying, hey, web security is really important. And, and we'd get these nods and they'd be like, yeah, but we're focusing on, focusing on the SANS Top 25 right now. So until we get dealt with that, we're, we're not going to bother with this web stuff, um, which we thought was a little strange. If you do like risk analysis and really figure out what should you be doing, you, you can't, you know, just build the, the roof on your house and not have any walls or whatever the right analogy is. Mm. Um, so we said, you know, we need our own uh, top X list and we chose 10 instead of 25 just because to make it more consumable. Of course, that's always made it fun because everyone wants to get their item in the top 10, but that's a different story. Um, so that's really just where the, the idea came from. And so, I mean, Jeff and I just wrote it, right? Mm. As uh, consultants, I mean, at least we had had a lot of exposure to a lot of apps, a lot being small at the time, way back in 2003. But we, you know, we had a team of 10 odd consultants and 
And uh, we've done a lot of work for a lot of people. And so we, this is kind of like our professional opinion mm-hmm. based on at the time, four years of focused work on web security. Mm-hmm. And so that, that was really it. There was The only data we had was our own consulting practices data, right? Yeah. And so we published a top 10 list and well, it was pretty reasonable, we thought, and okay. super well received. I mean, actually when we published it, the top 10, the OWASP servers went offline. <laughs> they got slash dotted and, and <laughs> killed it, literally. It was uh, quite amusing. Um, and then, uh, then and obviously in future versions, we're like, you know, you know, we'd like to be able to justify our p- opinions uh, with some public data. So we, we started getting public data involved and the, the quality and the and the the level of detail in that uh, got broader and broader. I mean, we, we did kind of like a friends and family data collection process for a while for one or two versions. Of, and then we eventually opened it up to more public. And then, of course, you guys that are running it now, and you run the top 10 now, mm-hmm. you and Brian and, and the rest of the team have done an unbelievable job at, at collecting massive amounts of data and writing cool tools to crunch that data and uh, provide uh, you know, something concrete behind your professional opinion. But yeah. at the same time, you're, you're kind of following in our lead where there's not just the rear window look of look at data, but we need to look forward based again on professional opinion mm-hmm. to have one or two on the cusp kind of issues in the top 10, because if it's only a rear facing top 10, that's not great for awareness. And that's one of the big things of the top 10. So people, anyway, may, that's, not, yeah, people may not be aware of this as well. I put CRSF into the I was top 10 2007, not because we had data for it, but because every app had it and it needed to be oh, yeah. addressed. You know, yeah, I mean, at, the time, at the time you worked at Aspect and you were seeing this stuff. And mm. so we're seeing it. I mean, it wasn't in the public data, but it was in our private data because we were looking for it. Mm-hmm. And then I similarly, I added uh, known vulnerable components in 2013, I think. And because I knew it was a problem and we were starting to look for it in maybe 2011, 2012. Mm-hmm. So we knew it was a problem. It just but the public data didn't support it because not everyone was was looking for it. Yeah. And now it's critical, absolutely monstrous issue. Yeah. Billions of dollars of companies working on just that one problem. And it's a hairy problem. So absolutely. It's also the subject of much of the most recent US government's um, cybersecurity order, executive order. Um, yeah, and so people are <laughs> absolutely. Um, the interesting thing is that from my perspective, even though they're, you know, back in the early days of AppSec, you know, every individual tester might get through maybe 30 or 40 assessments a year. The data that you had in 2003 and 2004 stood up really well. And people complained that there wasn't much movement in the OS top 10. But the reality is, is you had good data. And well, when we got more good data, it just reinforced the original good data. (laughs) Yeah, I mean, they, the, the top tens of the years have never been perfect, but they've been pretty close to the mark mm. and definitely have served its purpose uh, well, I think. And they've put, stood up to a lot of scrutiny. I mean, I, when we added non vulnerable components, we actually had people complaining, well, that's not a developer issue. That's an infrastructure issue. I'm like, what? <laughs> Only the developers can choose to upgrade the component and make sure it works. And I just was shaking my head. Um, but then within a year, everyone, the brothers like, oh my God, that was so critical. I'm glad you added it. And da, 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 da. So yeah, we kind of stuck with our guns and eventually, uh, we were rewarded with confirmation that our ideas were on the mark. So that was good. So part of OS is our community. And, uh, for a long time, you ran the Columbia chapter, um, and you also did the global AppSex for many, many years. Um, do you have any highlights from your time doing either the chapters or the conferences? Yeah, well, let, let me back up a little bit. So, you know, we got involved in 2002, as I said, and then 2003, we did the top 10. And uh, we came up with these ideas of having conferences, uh, Jeff and I, and, uh, and, and chapters 
both. I think Jeff was the idea who specifically came up with the idea of chapters as a way of building the community, right? And uh, so I was actually not involved in the very first OAS conference, the one that was in New York on a weekend with Kerfee and mm -hmm. Jeff and whatever. I think I was having a baby at the time or some other important life event. Uh, so I couldn't make it. And then, uh, but Jeff comes back from the conference and he says, yeah, Kerfee's decided that he's, you know, he's got too much going on. Uh, he think he offered to us to take over running OWASP and we're like, fantastic, that's awesome. So uh, Jeff and I agreed to, uh, to you know, run the, you know, the, the OWASP, the foundation, if you will, but there was no foundation. So the first thing we actually did is created a legal entity in Maryland, <laughs> which still is, uh, we called the OWASP Foundation. Um, and that's the corporate entity for, for OWASP itself. Um, and then once we had a legal entity, we actually started bringing in revenue from conferences and sponsors and so on and so forth. So then we actually had to do the mundane stuff of actually doing accounting and filing taxes and yada, yada, yada. So I did a lot of that machinery for years. Mm. Uh, our, in fact, our very first hire was, was a person who was a bookkeeper by, by training. And so she uh, did some project support and then she did the books and then uh, she liked doing the books more than the project stuff. So then we hired another person, Kate Hartman to run projects forever. And she did that for a long, long time. Mm. Um, and so that's just sort of like the very, very basic infrastructure of, of just running the corporate entity. And then uh, I started focusing on the chat on the conferences too. So I, I literally organized two years worth of conferences, both in the U S and Europe. So I, I mean, I literally organized four conferences by myself. Mm -hmm. So I did the call for papers. I found the venue, negotiated the contracts, physically went there, made sure it all worked, uh, you know, got sponsors, yada, 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 and did that for four, two years. And then we formed uh, chat, uh, committees at that point. And I was able to hand off the conferences to a committee of people to run conferences, which is great. And, and, you know, a sign of maturity as we got uh, more involved. Mm. Um, and then in parallel with that, uh, Jeff said, hey, we should start chapters to build communities. So mm. we formed a chapter in Maryland and I ran that chapter for a few years uh, with, with Jeff. Um, and then other chapters started springing up all over the place. And uh, I mean, that's been super successful because the number of people involved in the OWASP through chapter meetings is, is huge. But chapters come and they go totally based on the drive of the leaders. Yeah. Um, and so some chapters have just been amazingly successful for decades or more and others run for two, three years and someone gets tired and quits and it kind of dies off. And, but that's okay. I mean, it's been, a, the, I don't know, the number of chapters is 50, 100, 200. I don't even know what it is anymore. And it comes and goes, but the, the, the conferences have been ridiculous. Like it's, we've had US and Europe every year, but now we have, one in Israel every year. There's been one in Asia or Japan every year. I mean, you did one in Australia. I mean, uh, there's one in Texas, Denver, uh, Rochester. I don't know. There's tons of them. Yeah, and absolutely. it's awesome. It's absolutely awesome. So, uh, definitely... And it's also been OWASP, one of OWASP's biggest revenue generators, which has been great. So we can support the projects as best we can with the, the tiny amount of revenue that we have. Mm -hmm. And more importantly, so we can hire full-time people to work on OWASP stuff like you. Yeah. Who are like the most recent major hire that we've had. Um, but, you know, bookkeepers and accounts and IT people and, and yada, yada, yada. It's, I mean, we're, we're, the amount of work that OWASP does relative to the number of full-time employees is rather astounding, actually, because we have what, eight employees or something like that. I don't know Six. what we have now six but it's always been you know in the around five or less range for almost 20 years and yet yeah it's the heroes are the the project leaders that just say i want to do a project and they get like-minded people to contribute and they do amazing things and sometimes they get stale and kind of die and other mm -hmm. times they get heroic projects like zap for example which is unbelievably amazing there's many many other ones i'm not trying to leave anybody out but the the, the number of volunteers doing oas work is astounding and that's really where the bulk of their 
the low wasp output is absolutely um, is the product, which is fantastic. So, um, in just wrapping up, you run the OWASP benchmark project. How do people get involved? What does the benchmark project set out to do, and how do people get um, help you with it? Oh well, th this was another idea that we had where. Um, you know, a lot of vendors out there claiming their tools are great, and but we didn't have any way of objectively measuring that. So we thought it would be cool to have an OS project to help with that. Mm -hmm. um, primarily, it's been me, unfortunately. Uh, so it hasn't gone as far as I would like it to go. Um, but the, the current release that's out there is, is specifically for Java. Um, one thing unique about it as a test suite is it's fully runnable web app and everything uh, in the test suite is open. Mm -hmm. So you can analyze it statically, you can analyze it dynamically with a tool like Zap or Burp or whatever. You, know, you can run uh, instrumentation tools on it. Um, so the point is, is because it's fully runnable and you can interact with it via web or open API spec or whatever, mm -hmm. any kind of technology that someone can invent to help find vulnerabilities should be able to run on it. So that way you can compare uh, static to dynamic to runtime or whatever, mm -hmm. and, and have concrete uh, metrics to allow you to compare them. And then the other thing that was kind of unique about it was scoring is built into it. So you can automatically uh, rescore tools at the click of a button. So nice. it was inspired by uh, NSA, the US, uh, National Security Agency has this test suite called Juliet that they've had for 10 plus years. And Juliet is, covers a few languages like Java, .NET, uh, C, C++. Um, but it currently it's only static. So you can mm -hmm. run static tools on it, but it's not really runnable. Uh, so you can't run, and it's not web. So you can't run tools like Zap on it. Um, but so, I mean, it's very useful but it, you can only run certain kinds of tools on it, which is unfortunate because we live in a world where tons of different techniques are out there. You want to enable comparison of all those techniques. And then scoring is all done manually. So, I mean, they mm -hmm. use scripts to make it easier, but it's like a man month of work for someone to score against Juliet. And who's going to do that except NSA, right? Yeah. So that was the other thing we wanted to solve with Benchmark is making it uh, scorable. Um, we are working on a, a .NET version of Benchmark, actually. Um, uh, actually, the Parasoft team has uh, come, come together and said, hey, we want to contribute. Yeah. It's moving slowly, but it is moving. But if someone wants to contribute to Benchmark, just let me know. I mean, I actually have people contributing, doing pull requests all the time. Nice. Here's a new parser. Here's a fix to a scorecard generator for tool X. Or here's a bug in Benchmark it's not realistic or whatever. They do pull requests. I accept requests all the time. So it's it's available for people to contribute to. Mm -hmm. um, so I would love more people to get involved because uh, right now it's mainly me, the hero, uh, running it. And I'm only one guy and I'm getting kind of long in the tooth here. So I have other things to occupy my time except working on OS all day. Um, I would love to have a thriving community around building uh, more OS benchmarks in other languages. Absolutely. Um, so. I think that's one of the strengths of OWASP is being able to get people to come together. Um, we had um, Cyclone DX come to us um, uh, through a very generous donation by the project team. And I believe that they're getting more contributions after the fact. And we definitely, you know, we're, we're chasing down a similar one at this very moment. Um, we can't announce it just yet, but um, our primary thing is, OWASP has a lot of folks who are very interested in this stuff and they can help. So if you are interested in helping, please uh, do reach out to Dave and um, there might be some simple bugs, some documentation to ease yourself into it. But after that, yeah, there's probably some very juicy things to get into. Oh so, yeah, there's infinite stuff to work on. Um, I just want to mention real quick some of the other things that I helped launch real quick and mm -hmm. then we can wrap it up, I guess. So when I was working on the top 10, uh, comp cross-site scripting was really complicated. We were telling people things like validate your input to avoid cross-site scripting, which we realized later was terrible advice. Mm -hmm. 
because you can't validate your way out of cross-site scripting. You have to output and code properly and that's very complicated. Um, so I, I encourage Jeff Williams actually to write the first cheat sheet at OWASP ever on cross-site scripting. And, I'm, and then I got out there and I'm like, wow, that's really useful. We should have a cheat sheet on every item in the top 10. Yeah. So I, I worked on that and eventually got that. And then the top the cheat sheets actually became their own project, which is now run by, I don't know who, Jim Manico and some other guys. I don't know who runs it now. Yeah. Um, but that's turned out to be a fantastic project. Um, we came up with the idea, Jeff and I came up with the idea of the application security verification standard. We wrote version one of that. Uh, after that, we're like, we're tired. We can't work on this anymore. But obviously the community thought it was valuable. So somebody else picked it up and it's now it's on version two, three, four. I don't know what now. Uh, um, four, three is, happy. Yes, so four, three is coming out and 5.0 is being worked on. Yeah, I mean, which is fantastic. And uh, and so it's great to see these things that we launched. And then we said, well, yeah, we don't have enough time to keep working on it. But they, they, now they have their own life of their own. Uh, we did OWASP SAPI, we did OWASP uh, anti sami which I actually maintain now for Arshan because he's too busy working on contrast. Um, so I actually, I'm the maintainer on anti sami even though I'm not really that expert in what it does, but I'm, I'm able to maintain it for him. And then a volunteer has come out of the woodwork from South America that does all the technical work on it for me. So it's fantastic that between the two of us, we can manage that. Yeah, I think what other projects we've started, I don't know, I can't even remember them all. But uh, I don't know how many there is, four, five, six flagship projects now that we started. Yep. Uh, many of which we don't, we're not even involved with anymore, but they've taken on a life of their own. And it's fantastic to see people continue to contribute to them. And obviously they provide value to the community or people wouldn't work on it. So. Absolutely. And I think, you know, I think it's a sign of a good project when we do get community taking on the actual duties of doing it. Um, with the ASVS team, we recently appointed our fifth co-leader um, because he was really active. So Ila Lang gave us a lot of excellent constructive feedback and it was a no brainer to add him to the team. Yeah, it's great. Hmm? So Dave, thank you so much for meeting with us. And again, congratulations on your Distinguished Lifetime membership. It was well-deserved for such a long period of time. Thank you so much and for all the things you've done for OWASP. Well, and you too. You've done some amazing work for OWASP as well. And when you got hired as director, I was thrilled to see someone so deeply involved in OWASP get to the point where you can do that for your day job, which is fantastic. In fact, one of my... Years ago, one of my, my retirement idea job was to have your job, but you've already got it and I'd rather have you stay there and I'll go do something else. So it's congrats to you for your role and hopefully it's not killing you too much, but uh, you, you totally deserve it. So I'm thrilled that you're where you are. Thank you, I appreciate it. It's definitely a dream job. Okay, thank you. I'll catch you the next Thanks. time. Bye. Right, bye, -bye.